It has been so nice out lately and it's making me feel super motivated to get some springy things done. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And after the inside plant care things are done, I wanna head outside and take care of my chicken things and also introduce you to them. So we'll get into all that after the plant care stuff. Right here, this begonia maculata is just getting super, super top heavy. It's really tall now, like you can see almost as tall as me. I need to come up with a solution for like staking it. Especially this one down here, it's very, very droopy. Is it thirsty? Yes, let's water. <laughs> Turn this around so you can see a little better. As I water plants lately, I've been giving them a little, a little sprinkle of some Osmocote granules. And systemic for like a little spring pest mass murder. <laughs> And you know what's really exciting that I had not noticed until now? A new stalk is growing up out here. <gasps> that is so cool. Oh. And I thought I couldn't take care of begonias. Things are really starting to grow for her springtime, which is really exciting. This is my favorite time of year to be a plant hobbyist, a plant keeper, a plant goddess, what have you, <laughs> because All of the hard work from the year, we start to see now, you know, when things really start to grow. And that's not to say like my, I don't know about you guys, my plants really do continue to grow through the winter, but it does get really, really cold where I live. So my house is just colder and they slow down in growth. So it's still an exciting time, even though I do still see growth throughout the year. And I'm really hoping that this bad boy will bloom this year again. That would be really cool. I got one single bloom last year. Yeah, it was really exciting. <laughs> Shall we go take a look at the rest of my plants in here? Since we're here, I guess I'm in a little bit of a rearranging mood. <laughs> I am also going to start pulling everything that needs to be repotted this year. So I'm just gonna set these kinds of plants aside. I'm gonna move this here. Probably the plant that needs the most overall maintenance is my Syngonium white butterfly. So I just recently looked back at some of my older videos and I have not repotted this plant in six years, you guys. Six whole years, okay? I'll throw up a little thing sh to show you. This is what it looked like almost six years ago. It was two little cuttings from my grandma. And yeah, like now it is so crazy because there's many, many little stems in there. I don't really do anything care-wise for this other than fertilize, you know, pest treat and water. Like I haven't even been pulling off its aged leaves. Clearly this plant is like healthy and happy because it's grown so much, but We got some primping to do. Welcome to one of our basement rooms um, where I store a bunch of stuff, do all my repotting. How's that? Oh, that's so beautiful. I pinched my finger. <laughs> Skip ahead 10 seconds if you don't wanna see my owie. Okay, yeah, that looks like absolutely nothing, but you can like see where it pinched. And there's a blood blister under there a little bit. Chicken chores are gonna be a bitch with this owie. 
and it is just a mere owie, a little tiny little thing, but I'm dramatic. Okay, let me get some dirt. What do we think about this blue pot? It's not a whole lot bigger. Here's the before. I am a little bit nervous to get this potted up because Syngonium are a little bit wild and unruly and how you see it's just hanging in a weird way. Uh, sometimes when you repot them, it just looks, the plants look a little awkward for a while and I just absolutely love this plant and the way it looks. So I've had a hard time <laughs> wanting to do that. This is everything I pulled off. That looks like it was about half the plant. Yeah, I mean, you can see a little bit better now. This plant is just like, even when it's like clean and healthy, syngoniums just are kind of messy looking. We are gonna go ahead and repot this. I'm gonna take it off of this stand for now. Oh, what? It is not as well rooted as one would expect. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of roots. I am just gonna break this up a tiny bit. Normally, I like really tear my plants apart when I repot them, but this one, I don't actually wanna do that because I think it'll help the plant hang a little bit better if things don't get moved around too much. Root ball looks good. So small compared to the rest of the plant. Looking close up at it, it definitely has gotten root rot at some point, but hey, it bounced back. So that's cool. Good on ya, good little plant. I've got a bin of my potting mix back here. Backfill. And carefully, I'm gonna try and put this in there so that the stems don't get disrupted. Oh. Give it a little shimmy. And we'll see how this settles in. Right now, I don't actually have, oh no, did I just accidentally rip something? No, I don't have a big enough saucer for this at the moment. I am headed thrifting in Salt Lake tomorrow though. So yeah, we'll see if I find anything good. So I'm just gonna use this, this dish. And I think it's gonna live here on the windowsill. Oh yeah. Where did this come from? Maybe this is the stem that got root rot. Where are my scissors? Cut. I haven't watered yet, so it's having a hard time holding in place, but. And then I'm gonna cut these into smaller pieces with like two nodes on each stem. Push 
push those in too to some of the empty gaps. Let's see if we can't get a more full pot. Why not? A. Eh? I think this is what they call making lemonade. Cool. And let's water. That felt really nice to get out of the way. I've really been putting that off for so long. So I'm glad to finally get it done. And I mean, you can see it looks really messy. So that's just kind of how syngoniums are. And it's what I love about them, but also something that requires a lot of patience because they do just kind of need to sit in the same spot and grow in without being moved for them to look their best, you know? So. I want to see how big I can get this bad boy to get. So we're just going to keep it going. Oh, it looks so nice. Cute. Move my terrarium back to this table. Cute. And this tray of plants being bottom watered right there so that they can get some sunlight. <sighs> yeah, it's coming along. <laughs> Hi, baby. Oh. oh, you are such a cute old man. My cute old guy. Are you excited for your hair appointment? <gasps> that would be so nice. <laughs> oh, good boy. Okay, let's go. Back in my office. Oh, it just already looks so much better. Okay, don't get me wrong. It still looks cluttered, but a lot less cluttered without that big plant taking up so much space there. Anyway, here's what we have going on. I am a little nervous to be working in here because <laughs> this little setup here is a time lapse of my fern growing these new stems. So far this thing has been running for seven days now. I will insert what I have time-lapsed. So far it's only like, anyway, I'm really scared I'm gonna bump it. You see it's turning into a leaf, oh my gosh. That is so exciting. This has been a really fun project. <laughs> So I will definitely take my time. Now I want to clean off the windowsill and add plants onto here again. I do move most of my plants off the windowsill for <clears throat> winter because where I live in Utah, we have very harsh winters. It gets in the negative degrees, um, super snowy, like we always get snow in here. So like it's just really cold up against the window and plants don't really like that. That's probably why my ficus altissima is the way it is. Because <laughs> I didn't move it this year. And of course, without plants taking up all the space, I do end up with a lot of clutter. Some of my little pots I make. Oh, this doesn't seem safe. To move everything back. I truly don't know what this Raffidophora cursiva is doing. I don't know, maybe it's trying to find a new spot to like grow. <laughs> well, yeah, that's definitely what it's doing. It was growing, 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 and then it just has not put out a leaf in a long, long time. Maybe it's because of winter. 
maybe got too cold or something. It is really cold down here. That's honestly probably what it is, but whatever. I'll give it more time to figure itself out. And if at the end of this growing season, it hasn't put out a leaf, <laughs> then I'll start to worry about it. Aloe vera. Tephrocactus geometricus. Put this one here. Nope. I think I'm gonna put this here. Oh yeah. Haworthia. Dracaena. Cute, okay. It feels so much more planty in here. I love it. Less cluttered. If you have any interest in chickens, I'm sure you've seen the mason jar lentil sprouts. Those are awesome. We make them all the time for our chickens. I, I do have 10 chickens and I thought I'd show you how we do it because it's really, really easy. The boys love to do it with me and it's a nutritious snack for the chickens and they love them. Yeah, all you gotta do, get some mason jars and throw a bunch of lentils into them, a third cup-ish. It's hard to say because my kids did all the measuring and pouring, but fill up the jar with water and let the lentils soak overnight. The next day, drain the water and then add fresh water to rinse the lentil. So I'll like shake them up really good and then drain the water out. From here on out, you're going to keep a rubber banded paper towel on top and set it in a bright, warm spot. You're gonna repeat day two's steps every subsequent day, every single day, you're going to rinse the beans and then drain the water. Rinse the beans, drain the water. Rinse the beans, drain the water. Oh, and make sure you're putting the paper towel on top. Normally by day four, the beans have sprouted. I can see some green leaves popping up and this is the day I feel comfortable giving them to my chickens. You just wanna make sure that the lentils are sprouted or have been cooked because uncooked beans and lentils are poisonous to pretty much everybody, but you can let them grow for kind of as long as you want to. Sometimes I like to let them grow for a while so they end up with a lot of green stem for my chickens to eat. This is actually day seven or eight since I first started filming this process. You can see they're starting to sprout out the top. We are going to you know, rinse them out, do all of that stuff. Clearly a couple days ago, I took the paper towels off the top because they're outgrowing it. Yeah, so every day, every day I just take them to the sink, add some water and give it a really good shake. And a good sniff. <laughs> I think I might have a smelling superpower. I feel like freaking Tandro or something because I can smell really good. When food has gone bad, I can smell bacteria type stuff. This jar is a little messed up, so this is the one we're gonna go give to the girls today. And this one's going back on my shelf. Right there. There are grow lights on this plant shelf um, on this one and this one. They're turned off right now, but when I do have them on, uh, this shelf gets a little bit warm from the light underneath it. So yeah, I think it kind of helps speed up the process when I grow them here. Let's go feed and take care of my chickens. You know what, we'll let them out to roam the yard for a little bit. We're missing someone. Uh oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I just can't count. I did already start gathering eggs, but I haven't got them in three days, which, yeah, checks out. I have three eggs here from someone who clearly is using this box. Oh, they're so cute, little pink eggs. Another pink one. Ooh, this one's warm. This one is from Kitty, my well summer, which is the brown chicken. 
you'll see in a minute. Actually, all three of these came from her. They are all so different looking, uh, but they were all three laid by her. This one is so cute. I love when she lays them like this. Oh my gosh, cute. On, on these other two, they're very, very faint. Egg haul. They're so pretty. Especially these blue ones. Anyway, I'm going to lure them over here with some lentils. I know they'll follow me, they always do. <laughs> oh, I just love them, they're so funny. And they do, they have their little individual personalities. Oh, it feels so nice outside, I'm so happy. Make sure there's no poop. I guess. You better go away or the rooster will get ya. Bismarck is very afraid of the rooster. I don't blame him. This is Liesel. She's a blue Orpington. Okay, yeah, she doesn't like me. But she does like my treats because she's a big girl. <laughs> it's so rude. Okay, this one is Ruth. She's a blue copper Moran. Oh, he's freaking out. <laughs> Oh, dude, you stupid bitch. <laughs> that was kind of scary. <laughs> Liesel, let somebody else have some. Good boy, I know you were kind of scared of that rooster, huh? That white one is Joanna, and she is an Easter egger. She lays blue eggs. I'm moving over here to try to get the rooster to come closer. He's so cute. He's my favorite chicken for sure because he like won't, when I bring treats out here, he won't eat until all of these guys, you're a bully, until all of these guys have had their treats. And then once everybody's had some, then he'll have some. If I throw like chicken scratch out into their run, he'll call for the chickens to come to him and have the treat. Or sometimes he'll even like pick up treats and carry them to them, which is really cute. I love him. He is kind of scary though. Like I can't like let my kids be around him, the black one unsupervised because he is very protective. Uh, same with Bismarck. He will mess Bismarck up if I'm not around. Huh, Biz? Biz, you're being such a good boy. Come here. Tubbleard. Oh. <laughs> See, he's calling them, them over. That's so funny. Look, he's carrying a treat in his mouth, calling them over. Oh, I wish I had caught that on camera.
he hears the truck so he's on alert <laughs> that's kind of the cool thing about roosters like they really will protect the chickens oh That's three days worth of eggs. I guess I'll lay these out here until I can get some eggs boiled because my uh, fridge storage egg thingy is full. <laughs> and yeah, I'm gonna be boiling eggs tonight. We go through about two dozen a week, I would say, ish. Yeah, about that, maybe a little more. So we eat them every day. Me and the boys do. And then I also give Bismarck an egg every day. And sometimes I feed them back to the chickens if like we have some left over because they're really good for the chickens. I know it kind of weirds people out because it's somewhat cannibalistic, but kind of not really because, well, these ones, yes. Let's not get into all of that right now. <laughs> um, I'm going to call it a night, relax, get prepared to accomplish a lot tomorrow. So I will see you tomorrow. Hey guys, the sun's out. So I'm gonna get these buns outside and do some chicken chores. I've got my protection for some of the chicken chores we'll be doing and scarf to cover my face, protect my lungs from the dusty chicken bedding. Okay, let's go. Just kidding, you're coming with me. <laughs> this is the chicken run. What I try to do like every season change is toss the soil just so it's a little bit cleaner. They really like it because they get little fresh wormies. Here comes Bismarck. Rooster and the Bismarck don't have a great track record. You watch out for that rooster, he'll get you. Hey kitty. The brown one is kitty. Good boy. Okay, let's do this. Actually, I need to clear all this stuff out of the way. Okay, this is the coop connected to the run we were just in. And up here is where they sleep. Since they spend so much time like sleeping in here and laying their eggs in here, it gets pretty disgusting. So I'll shovel out half of this and add half fresh bedding to keep it less smelly, to keep everybody clean. Having chickens has been so awesome for me because I would not go outside during the winter if not to take care of my chickens. My chickens really are the only reason I ever get some sun during the winter. We got the eggs in there. We're gonna go take them inside. Okay, we're gonna put these new eggs away. I store my eggs in this little plastic thing right here. <sighs> I don't wash them or anything. If there are any big um, pieces of like poo on them, then I'll go, I'll scrape that off outside, but they stay pretty clean up until it's time for me to like really to change the bedding. But you don't wanna wash them because they have this thing called the bloom. I don't know like how much about eggs people know, but it has a bloom on the outside, which helps protect the egg from moisture getting inside, which is why you can keep like fresh unwashed eggs out on your counter or in the fridge for a lot longer. So 
This one's boiled now, but this was laid by Emily, my Polish. <laughs> They're so long and skinny. This one's actually really hard to peel. Here you go. Yeah, just working to toss all of the soil out here and especially mix this in. You're not a chicken. I'm not a chicken too. Are you sure? It's still only 50 degrees outside, so although I'm dressed like it's summer, it's really because I'm having vitamin D deficiency. Like tears are coming to my eyes just thinking about soaking up the sun anywhere I possibly can. Like honestly, if it was even just five degrees warmer, I'd be doing all my back backyard chores in a bikini <laughs> and just toughen out the cold because I want the sun on all of my skin. Moral of that story, I came inside to make a warm latte really quick and warm up um, before I go back out. But while I was making it, this was delivered, which are wildflower seeds. It's just like a bunch of wildflower seeds. These ones grow natively where I live. I'm gonna go sprinkle these in my side yard. We kind of have an issue back there. Our yard is a lot lower than our neighbor's yard. So don't know what happened with when the builders built our properties, but the dirt from their yard is always like sliding through. So I was like, this year, instead of doing something super permanent, and I'm going to sprinkle a whole bunch of these seeds into the dirt patch there so that wildflowers can grow. It'll be beautiful. It'll be good for butterflies and bees. Low effort way to get some plants growing back there. Um, honestly, Ryan might not be too happy about this, but I'm just not gonna tell him. <laughs> <laughs> mm. let's go throw them out there oh gosh yeah this is it it gets kind of windy over here but whatever we will just move all this out of the way on them. 
If you want to. Now we need to stay off of it so it can grow. Yeah, let's go inside. Let's watch a movie.